Yo, what's up, nerds? In this video, we're going to be discussing the second normal form. So, in order to put things in second normal form, they must already be in first normal form. So check out the video I made right before this one, before you come and watch this one. Now, second normal form deals with, deals with what's known as a partial dependency. That's when a column only depends on part of the primary key. So, in order for it to depend on only part of it, you have to have a compound or composite key. So basically, the, the primary key has to be multiple columns. Because think, if you just have one column as the primary key, a column can't partially depend on half of it. Does that kind of make sense? I don't know, maybe not. Let's say we just have a random table for people. So we have, you know, the... Uh, Persons, let's go with, um, let's go, let's just use a person ID. And we have some attributes about this person. We have their uh, name, you know, maybe their phone or their pH level. <laughs> uh, and maybe their email. Let's first talk about what a dependency is before we go in and talk about partial dependencies. These columns depend upon the primary key. So in this case, this is the primary key. And there's a dependency here. Another way you can think about it is if we have another table about cars, we could have a um, car ID, which is also a surrogate key. Now this person's name it does not have a dependency here. You can see this name is only dependent on the person ID, not upon the car. So this doesn't make any sense here. Another thing is that uh, the person ID doesn't have an unrelated entity or an unrelated attribute about the car ID, so such as the car color. The car color has a dependency on the car, not the person. This isn't going to make any sense. That's what a dependency is. Now, what is a partial dependency? So let's see what a partial dependency looks like using surrogate keys. You'll see this when you have a many-to-many -many relationship broken up with an intermediary table, which is the correct way to design a many-to-many -many relationship. So let's think of the example of books and authors. Because if you think about it, one author can write many books, and one book can be written by many authors. So conceptually, it's a many-to-many -many relationship but we're going to store that in the database as one-to-many relationship on one side and then one-to-many relationship on the other side. So we get this look at the table, intermediary table, and then a table. So over here, let's put the authors. So this is the author table. Then over here we have the book. So this is the book table. And then in between, we have the interme intermediary table of book authors, or book author. So this is the correct way to design it. Now when it comes to attributes, all the attributes about the author are going to go over here. All the attributes about the book are going to go over here. And all the attributes that have to do with both the, at the book and the authors connected, those will go in this table. So first, let's give them um, some surrogate keys. We'll give this one an author ID. We'll give this one a book ID. And this one's going to have two foreign keys of the author ID and the book ID. And those foreign keys together will be the key for this table. So that's kind of how you would set this up. Now things about the author go over here. So you know, their first name, maybe their last name, maybe their birth date. Whatever you want to put about the author. The book would have stuff about, you know, the ISBN, which is, the ISBN is the uh, code on the back of a book you can look up. It tries to uniquely define that book, so the exact edition and everything else, so you can just use that to define it. Um, you know, we would may maybe have the page numbers or the publisher. The publisher could be a primary key or a, a foreign key to another publisher table, or you could just have it in that table if, if that's how it worked. But 
likely it'd go to another table. But we're getting off topic. Anyways, it would look something like this. So author information goes over here, book information goes over here. This is the correct way to design this table because when it comes to dependency, the first name of the author has only to do with the author and it has to do all about the author. Now let's look at things that have to do with both the book and the author. We could have something such as the author position. Now what that is, when, when you write books, often there's a person who has like the first author position, which is what the big name is, and then you'll have the second and the third and the fourth. People often compete to try to get first author. This has to do with both the book and the author. Because if you think about it, if we put author position here, that's going to depend on what book we're talking about. We can't just put author position one and say he's first on every single book he ever is going to write. That doesn't make sense. We can't just say author position one on the book because it doesn't say which author we're talking about. Which author is one? It doesn't make sense. That's why we have to have it in this table because it has to do with the book and the author. So we could say book ID is 17, author ID is 22, and the author position is 1. So that would say the book with the ID of 17 and the author with the ID of 22 is in the second or the first position on that book. It's a little complicated, but we combine that to, with joins to make it make more sense for uh, the actual viewing of the data. But anyways, this relies on the book and the author ID. That's why it's in this table. This is correct. Now an incorrect thing would be something like the ISBN because the ISBN has to do with the book only. So when you look at this, it relies upon the book ID. It has a dependency on the book ID, but it doesn't have a dependency on the author ID. This is an example of a partial dependency. Now the correct way to fix this, in this case, would just to be to take ISBN and put it in the book table, which we obviously already did, because I put that in there first when we started. But if you didn't have this table and you're working with just say like one table maybe, well then the correct way to do it is to take the book ID, the ISBN, drag them to another table, and then use a foreign key to connect to that table, which we already have it structured correctly because we understood how to design that many-to-many -many relationship, which is why relationships are useful to understand. But if you don't have it already set up correctly, you'll have to take the partial dependency and move it to another table and reference it with a foreign key. For second normal form, you want to first be in first normal form, and second, remove all partial dependencies by moving the columns as we did here. We took that ISBN, put it in the correct table. Now another thing you can think about is if you have a table where there's a primary key of only one column, you're already in second normal form for that. Like imagine it for this. How can birth date be dependent on only part of the primary key, which is author ID? Because there's only one. You can't, you can't depend on only part of an individual column. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. I don't know why I even ask you guys that. Like, does that make sense? It's like you're watching like a little kid's show. Yeah! So yeah, peace out guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the third normal form video.